Today we're going to be talking about the Sonos Arc Ultra. It is one of the top range soundbar from Sonos and it is Atmos capable costing at 1000 US dollars. In Singapore, it translates to about $1,800 or so. But it has a built-in micro sub which they call the sound motion. And this sound motion driver I have in my hands right now is a live one. I've actually applied a current, I applied speaker signals through it and it fires off. I'll probably make another dedicated video about this. Now, this micro sub it produces plenty of bass on its own, and you can pair the Sonos Art Ultra with surrounds in the form of era 300 which i have in my room right now and you can add up to two subs a gen 3 or a sub 4 but the problem is you don't need two subs because there's already a lot of bass coming out from the arc ultra now i'm gonna give you the settings up front so i don't want to hold you up if you don't have time to go through the rest of the video this is it now the first set of settings i'm gonna do is actually for the arc ultra on its own without the surrounds and without the subs and they are here so what you need to do is actually to go into the eq settings for the arc ultra set the bass to a minus six this is counterintuitive but bear with me so treble set it to a plus three loudness you should leave it on as default now when you go into the heights menu you can set the heights menu to any value you want it doesn't impact the sound signature but set the heights audio to a plus six for my settings in my room volume limit make sure it is off it stays off Spatial audio, spatial music, you should leave it on for Atmos music coming in from Apple Music. Speech enhancement, leave it to off. Now, this is important. Speech enhancement, leave it to off. Now, night sound, definitely turn it off. So, this is the settings for the Arc Ultra on its own. Now, if you pair it up with a pair of surrounds, in my case, the Era 300, and you pair it with the Sub 4, you will need a slightly different set of settings and that's because the bass and the sound signature changes a little bit the surround itself doesn't change much of the sound signature but here are the settings that you will see on screen right now so again go into the arc ultra setup go to eq page set the bass to a minus seven treble you will add a plus two loudness you will turn it on and leave it on surrounds level you should set it to a plus three for tv levels music levels should be a plus 15 and set music playback to full instead of ambient and this is so that you will hear fuller music from the surround speakers when you're playing music surround distance well by default it is between two and ten feet anything less than two feet will be like right next to your ears anything more than ten feet will be quite far away if you do true play then this doesn't really matter because true play will account for the distance for the surround speakers now sub audio you should set it to a minus one face control set it to zero heights audio plus six volume limit again turn it off spatial music turn it on now speech enhancement again leave it off night sound leave it off these two will impact how your soundbar sounds so there you go these are the settings for the arc ultra on its own as well as the arc ultra in a full setup with a sub 4 as well as era 300 as the surround sound so if you don't have time to stay on for the rest of the video there you go i have given you the upfront summary if you have found this helpful, I'll really appreciate a like or just drop a comment to see if it has helped you or you appreciate the sound differences that this setup has changed for your Arc Ultra soundbar. I do apologize. The Arc Ultra has been launched for quite a couple of weeks already and it does actually take a while to come up with all these best settings. Now, why does it take so long? Because I really need to familiarize myself with how the Arc Ultra sounds on its own as stock settings and we need to understand why we are changing each configuration change each time i make one change i actually have to do a frequency response sweep it is a lot of work and well if it really helps you i have a patreon link right here it's a qr code you can scan for monthly contribution or you can have a super tanks right here on the youtube channel yourself to make a small one-time contribution towards my coffee fund so there you go the best settings now if you do have some time 
I really do want to spend this time to run through the actual settings with you, explain to you why I did that so that you are able to learn it on your own and then do it on your own, learn something so that you know how to make those changes if the proposed settings that I have here doesn't suit you. So first thing first, before we go on, we have to understand how we use these settings, right? Now, use my recommended settings as the starting place. My room is definitely different from your room, not to mention that it's in a mess now. And your preference for sound is definitely going to be different from my preference for sound. Now, what is the logic? How do I come up with these recommended settings? The idea I have is to make the sound response as flat as possible, right? So this is as per intended by how the filmmaker makes it. Now, Sonos has a sound signature that is bass heavy. And believe it or not, the Arc Ultra right here has way too much bass, okay? Um, I'll go through the frequency response sweep later so you understand that, right? Now, the bass has really too much presence. It really overpowers the rest of the frequencies, including the mid-range and the treble. So dialogue is clearly audible. It's dependent on the material, really. Uh, most of the modern mixes, the audio will be quite all right. The older 5.1 mixes, the audio channel for dialogue might be a little bit soft, and that is possibly where you guys have the problems. So we need to temper the bass a little bit, right? You want bass when bass is needed. You do not want bass to come in when bass is not needed. Now, and for that, I mean, I don't want boom in my sound. If an explosion goes off, it should boom, it should boom deep. It shouldn't rumble and rock things around the room. You should feel it. You shouldn't see the bass like, you know, your cabinets are shaking. So those are unwanted bass. There's too much bass, there's too much boom. And if the explosion, if the boom lingers, then it should not be desirable. So use my settings as the starting point. Now you can add more bass as you require. And yes, it does sound counterintuitive to reduce so much bass on my settings, but Sonos has really outdone itself this time around. There's so much bass in the Arc Ultra, and when paired with the Sub 4, it simply delivers bass in space. You do not need to make so much bass. Just make sure that there's no boom. But again, that is my preference. So my settings here gives you a point where the frequency response curve is actually pretty much flat. And if you need more bass, you have quite a bit of headroom for you to adjust the bass upwards to get more bass. Or if you want to reduce or increase the treble, you can actually do the same as well. All right, so next up, I want to run through the frequency response sweep and how the frequency response sweep helps you visualize what these settings do to your setup. Now, the first chart that we're going to pull out is the frequency response chart. And this is the one for the red chart. It's the one for the Sonos Arc Ultra on its own. So you can see what I mean when I say that there's a lot of bass. And right about the 100 hertz point to the left and to the right, you can see a huge hump there, right? And this is in no small means, no small way being contributed by this micro sub, the sound motion driver within the Sonos Arc Ultra itself. So it does deliver a lot more more bass, the higher end of the bass spectrum, right? And you, this hum is actually, to me, uh, it has a lot of presence, but it does sound a little bit overpowering, right? And you can see that the mid-range and the treble is flat throughout, which is great, but it does mean that it is being overshadowed by the bass department, by this micro sub I have in my hands here. Now, the best setting for the Sonos Arc Ultra on its own is going to be represented in this green line here. Now, in this green line, you can see that I have um, effectively lowered the base by quite a large margin, right? So instead of having the base sound so much in your face, there's still a slight bump, right, as compared to the mid-range. And you will also notice that in my treble, I have lifted it up just a little bit. Now, why do I do that? Is if you look at the peaks of the treble and the peaks of the bass, it's going to be 
slightly more in line. So this is as opposed to having a huge peak in the base department on the Arc Ultra stock settings and a slightly more subdued um, kind of uh, treble in the stock settings. So in my recommended setting, if you see the peak here and the peak here, um, the bass and the treble, it is actually more in line. So this provides a slightly flatter response, a slightly more neutral and more natural response. You won't get the bass booming in your face. Now, this is not a bad thing, all right? I'm not saying that the stock settings for the Sonos Arc Ultra is bad, but this is what I prefer. Your preference might differ. So if you add back the bass, you can actually bring the bass up. So use my settings as kind of like the baseline where you can make further adjustments to your taste and not ruin the sound. So in the next frequency response chart, and this cyan curve here is for the Arc Ultra with the Sub 4 and a pair of ERA 300. Now the ERA 300 is not going to change the sound signature. It does maybe make things a little bit louder uh, all throughout the whole range. But if you look at the bass hum, right, it is no longer a peaky, it, it, it's a plateau, it's a platform, right? All the way ranging from the 30 hertz up to 100 plus hertz, it actually remains, it retains the bass signature and it's pretty elevated. Again, the same problem, the rest of the frequency response in the mid-range and the treble is still going to be a little bit subdued. It is flat, which is a good thing. I like flat response. Um, so what I did for the best settings for the Arc Ultra full setup with the sub and the surround is to, well, it will show up in this orange curve here. So if you look at the orange curve, I have brought down the entire base platform to uh, much more reasonable levels. It is still going to be a little bit higher than the mid-range and the treble. And again, I have pushed the treble up a little bit. Now, you, some of you who are familiar with my channel might wonder, hey, these settings differ um, quite a bit from my previous recommended settings, but just bear in mind that we are talking about a completely different soundbar here. This is the Arc Ultra, and as I've mentioned, it is a complete redesign. They've gutted the entire internals of the Arc Ultra, and they've put this sound motion driver inside, which changes the sound signature tremendously. So... It may not need a sub that much. It definitely does not need two subs. But what happens when you add one sub, it is still a lot of bass. Now, when you make some changes, I will explain to you where these changes are in just a little bit. But this is how the Arc Ultra with my best setting sound. A flatter response throughout. You still get your bass response. And the best part is the bass is there when it's needed. When the explosion comes off, there's a sub layer of bass sounds that you're going to feel, okay? And it doesn't rattle and it doesn't boom in your face. And that is the way I like my music. Again, your preference may differ, so you can increase the bass settings up or down a little bit according to your own preference. So as I promised you earlier in the video, I want to teach you about all these settings and what they do so you know how to make this on your own. So one by one, the base setting, right? The base setting has a range of minus 10 to a plus 10. The Arc Ultra actually has very strong bass already. So what the base setting does is, is to lower the entire bass spectrum from anything below 400 hertz up or down, right? Which will impact the sub output as well. So below 400 hertz, right? Including quite a bit of the upper bass uh, regions. Now treble setting, again, is a range of minus 10 to plus 10. And it makes changes from above 4 kilohertz or so by raising the treble. Now, loudness, by default, it is on. It actually makes a very small change. So leave it on, leave it off. It doesn't really matter. But uh, by default, I always leave it on. Now, surrounds for TV, it goes from minus 15 to plus 15. You can get a lot of immersion from your surround channels, but I recommend not to overdo it. So I never set these settings anywhere above plus 15 five or so so if you are sitting really too close and you're very far away from your soundbar maybe you need to lower it a little bit so that your surround channels don't overpower you so for music surround levels i like to always get plus 15 so that more music come out from my surround speakers which are better speakers for music than the sonos arc soundbar itself so i don't like the music coming out from the soundbar that's why i raise the music levels for the surround to a plus 15 15. And why is there a music playback, whether it's ambient or full? Because 
by default, it is set to ambient, but if you set it to full, the full range, right, all the frequencies will come from the surround channels and you'll be able to hear music in its full glory rather than a subset of the frequencies and it only fills in the sound from the soundbar. Again, like I said, I like my music coming from the Era 300, therefore I use this to set to full instead of ambient. Now, the other thing is the surround distance, right? Like I explained earlier, um, if you use true play, then this setting really doesn't matter. It will be set for you. But uh, otherwise, you have to set it to below 2 feet or 2 to 10 feet and below and above 10 feet. Now, most of our speakers will be between 2 and 10 feet, right? It shouldn't uh, fall outside the range. So for my case, they are about 4 feet away from me in the central position. So therefore, I set it to 2 to 10. And what it does is that it actually changes the timing of the sounds that is reaching your ear because it has to play concurrently with the sound that's coming from the sound bar to make sure that you have a coherent sound stage. Now, if you're not familiar, if you can't tell the difference, then maybe just leave this setting alone. The next setting is the sub-level. So sub-levels go from minus 15 to plus 15. The sub works below 100 hertz. Now, the base setting earlier, I mentioned, it changes things from below 400 hertz. The sub works below 100 hertz. And when paired with the sound motion driver from the Sonos Art Ultra, maybe it starts acting only about 80 hertz or so. The crossover point has changed. So when you push the sub level up or down, it only changes things from below 80 hertz. So if you hear a lot of boom in your sound, maybe bring down the sub level just a tiny little bit now the sub phase now this is a hard topic right and um, I would recommend that you don't change it because it changes the, um, the timing of the sub so that it presents a coherent sound stage to you because the sub is a separate speaker from the Arc ultra so when you set it to zero it means to say that it thinks that it's playing in phase but because of the distance difference between you and the arc and you and the sub it might reach you at different times so a lot of advanced subwoofers they allow 0 to 180 degrees and anything in between but for the sub 4 it only allows 0 or 180 so if you're not sure don't change it if you don't tell the difference don't change it now the heights difference the heights has a minus 10 to a plus 10 you can pump it all the way up. It won't change the sound profile. And uh, what I like to do sometimes is I go crazy and do a plus 10 depending on the scene I'm watching. But uh, in general, you set it to a plus 6. I think it should work fine and you can hear a difference in the heights channel. Now, volume limit, just don't do it, right? Don't limit the volume of your soundbar. I don't think it's necessary. Spatial music, of course, you leave it on so that if you are playing Atmos music, you can actually make use of the Atmos processing capabilities of your Sonos Arc Ultra setup. Now, speech enhancement. This topic is big. Speech enhancement has changed for the Arc Ultra. So speech enhancement, you can go in now and you have three levels of setting, either low or level 2 or level 3, right? Correspondingly to the old Sonos Arc, level 2 is the same as the old Sonos Arc. On the old Sonos Arc or the Beam or any other setup, you cannot change the levels of the speech enhancement. It's just on or off. But for the Arc Ultra, there are three levels. Now, I've turned it off because I found what it does is it really reduces a lot of volume out of your entire soundtrack. And if you are watching material in its full glory you really don't want to do that so my recommendation is to turn it off unless you really need some help in the speech enhancement when you're watching older material the new atmos mixes they are all good for speech you probably don't need it right the night sound is the other one it flattens the entire dynamic range now what is dynamic range dynamic range it actually is the difference between the loudest portion of your music and the softest portion of your music or the soundtrack right so ideally you do want to have them as big as possible you want quiet scenes to be quiet and you want loud scenes to be loud and therefore you can enjoy yourself your home setup like a movie theater but what that means is also that sometimes it will shock you and sometimes it will disturb your neighbors or your uh, flatmates or whoever is at home so you it night sound actually flattens the dynamic range so it makes the softer sounds louder and it makes the loud sound softer so you 
here a much more consistent volume but again this is not enjoyable so if you are critically listening to any soundtrack just turn it off so now you understand what each of this setting does you can play around yourself if you have questions please do ask them in the comment section down below it is going to be hard for me to answer all questions um it is the end of the year my room is in a mess i need to pack it up a spring cleaning for the end of the year i'm going on a holiday very soon as well so as far as possible i'll try to answer the questions but otherwise i know the good guys in this community on this channel right now right here will also help answer the questions on my behalf as well so thank you very much for your help now the last bonus segment in this video i want to go through I want to go through the films that I use to test all these, right? Um, and there are sections that I've extracted from the movies so that you know where and how to look out for the things that I look out for. Now, the first movie is 13 Soldiers. Now, in this movie, there's a lot of explosion, a lot of guns firing, like incessantly, right? So if you want to test the dynamic range, if you want to test the base frequency response of your setup, then this is really the movie to go for. They have long drawn explosion where it goes boom and it really shakes and rattles everything. And they have guns uh, firing off where it is a short burst of bass, right? More the mid bass version. So this is at about a minute 30 into the movie. You can actually catch this scene right here. Now, the next movie that I have been watching is uh, Gravity. I've been watching this since a long time ago. I think this was 2016 or something, so a good eight years ago. Th there's this scene um, where Sandra Bullock is locked in the uh, Russian probe and she was trying to fire the boosters from the probe to get to the ISS, the International Space Station. But she was flicking some okay. switches. Now the switches are actually from above I will her. Engage. So you will five, hear the four, atmosphere effect. Three, now this scene two, is from one. about the 55 minutes mark within the uh, movie itself. And it really gives a very strange feeling because the first time I heard it in a full atmosphere setup, I was thinking that there was actually something in my ceiling, right? I was like, oh, there's something up there, something is sticking. Then later did I realize that she was trying to flick a switch. The other movie that I thought was great to test the Atmos heights and the integration of bass into heights is from Kong, Skull Island. 30 minutes into the movie, Kong makes its appearance and there's a whole fleet of helicopters uh, going in slow motion. And when you go slow motion, the roto blades are moving in slow motion. The bass comes in and kicks in and they're supposed to sound like they're above you. What well, helicopters, right? The only thing that people think about when it comes to Atmos music is helicopters. So this is a good play of it. 30 minutes in the movie, Kong, Skull Island, you can hear the helicopter's blade going off. And the whole scene from there is just explosion after explosion and you get Kong beating his chest. A great demonstration of bass. Now, the next two movies I'm going to be talking about, in fact, the next three movies I'm going to be talking about is more focused on dialogue and really deep dialogue and spatial dialogue, right? So Mad Max, As the, world the original Mad Max Fury Road, right? Um, way, the opening broken. scene has it was hard dialogue. There's quite a bit of dialogue, crazy. but it has to be the dialogue that um, Me. you will hear. Or everyone else. There's a lot of deep, very gritty kind of sound, um, kind of voice that's coming out. You can hear it's also dead centered. It's a great test. Now, this is the opening scene. So just one minute or so in, you will hear this part from the movie. Here they come again. The next one is Spider Head. This is a Chris Hemsworth movie. It is honestly uh, kind of like a crappy movie, but the sound engineering is really perfect in this movie, right? The dialogue that takes place in the opening scene again, where they are no, playing the sound. Funny. He's speaking into an intercom that goes in the room and you can hear the sound that's coming from what all around you, you including the surround speakers, including the atmosphere heights. It just envelops you, the dialogue that is all around. And when it cuts into um, the, the dialogue itself without going through the mic, it locks you. into the center. It is a really great piece of audio engineering here. Now, the last movie I'm going to recommend is on The Mummy. So, this is the Tom Cruise version the of The Mummy. 
um, within the first, I think, forever. at the four minute mark or so, you will hear a lot of dialogue. That, uh, you'll hear male dialogue that is stories. coming in Russell Crowe, right? At last, and it is deep, it is bassy, it is powerful. If your system is set up properly and correctly, the dialogue secret. will be clear, it will be the locked into history. the center and, and the, the base of the voice, this male vocal is just amazing, all right? So these are the movies that I've been using to test my entire setup and to deliver this set of best settings to you. I hope this has been helpful. I know this is a long video. It's been a long video to make and it has been a long video to deliver. And this is a long video. If you have stayed on to this point, I would really appreciate a thank you, Pete, in the comment section so that I know that you have made it to this point in the video. This should be in excess of 20 minutes after I cut out everything. So thank you very much. If you need more information on the Sonos Arc Ultra, then check out this video here. If you need more information on the Sonos Sub 4, then check out this video right here. And I'll see you in one of these videos or in another video I make in December, whatever time I have out of the end of the year, and I'll see you in the next one.